Are you really listening to your channel partners? Because your channel partners have a unique view of your business and your markets. They have insight into your customers, your competitors, and your own organization's workings. They see and know things about your organization and your markets that you don't. So how well are you tapping their knowledge to improve your business? Many of the world's largest IT and T vendors have established partner advisory board programs to create a forum for receiving valuable feedback from the channel partners. But here at the Channel Enablers Division of Miller Hyman, channel partners from large, medium and small companies repeatedly complain to us that these partner advisory boards are not being well managed by vendors to ensure they realise all the value they can offer. Often, it seems vendors allow these forums to become a sales pitch directed at the channel rather than a forum to receive feedback and business guidance from the channel and jointly develop tactical and strategic business change together. I'm Gene Blackley, a senior consultant with the Channel Enablers Division of Miller Hyman. If you currently have a partner advisory board, you'll find this channel's connection update poses some stimulating questions. And if you don't currently have a formal partner advisory forum of any kind, you'll find this particularly interesting as a formalized way to tap the knowledge available in your channel. We'll explore the concept of partner advisory boards. What are they and why are they useful? What are the common mistakes vendors make with these forums and how can these be addressed? What are the best practices with partner advisory boards? And finally, we'll share some insights from a recent establishment of a partner advisory board facilitated by channel enablers in the Asia Pacific region. So what is a partner advisory board and how do they typically function? Well, usually it's a group typically set up by a vendor inviting representatives from different layers in the vendor's channel and from different types and sizes of organisations. Effective partner advisory boards reflect a cross-section of partners within a particular country or a region and or particular market segments. Typically, partner advisory boards involve anything from 10 to 30 organisations sending one representative to a partner advisory event, which may be a conference, a meeting, a meal or a teleconference. Sometimes the partner advisory board is controlled and directed by the partner community themselves, with elective representatives. Sometimes they're controlled and directed by the vendor. Partner advisory board sessions typically involve presentations and discussions about business challenges and opportunities. For example, exploring opportunities in the market and changing dynamics of customer demand, competitive product offerings or solutions, as well as tactical and operational discussions about how well the channel partner organisations are working together with vendors and how both can improve their performance. So why are vendors setting up partner advisory boards? Well, from the vendor's perspective, there's a number of key benefits from the exercise. First of all, your channel partners offer a very unique view of your whole business. They have unique insight into your customers and their demands and needs, unique insight into competitive offerings and how you perform against them, as well as unique insights into your own organisation and how well it works to serve the channel and to serve the end consumer needs. And those unique perspectives can offer very interesting insights into how to improve your business and make it more effective. Secondly, channel partners see your strategic and tactical moves differently than you and your organisation does. Before you make decisions and implement new policies, channel partners could be highlighting challenges, critical success factors and points of failure that you and your organisation might miss in your planning and preparations. So channel partners provide a unique opportunity to get feedback on decision making before decisions are made. It's also an opportunity to test ideas, an opportunity to ask what if we were to... because channel partners can talk through from the different perspectives the likely implications of changes that you might want to make with your product mix, your marketing programs, your sales incentives or anything else that affects customer demand through the channel. The other value, of course, is a broad spectrum of views exist amongst your channel partners. You might have hundreds, thousands, or tens of thousands of channel partners across the world. And they've all got views about how you could make your offering more effective and how your business could function more effectively. 
The advantage of a partner advisory board is the opportunity to consolidate all of those views down to something that's manageable that you can actually hear, that you can listen to and process in your organisation and make adaptation and change to produce better results. Another opportunity with partner advisory boards is their ability to be a powerful voice inside your organisations. You and your colleagues might be harping on about business issues that the business just doesn't seem to consider a priority. Sometimes for senior executives to get what the channel is saying, they may need to hear it from channel partners themselves. And partner advisory boards offer an excellent opportunity to do that. And finally, another key value of partner advisory board is strengthening the ties that bind. Your channel partners are not customers. They are a supplier to you. You're in a business relationship together. And like any relationship, real open two-way communication is key to maintaining the health of the relationship to make it go the distance. So that's from the vendor's perspective, but what about from the partner's perspective? Well, partners value partner advisory boards because you're in business together. And they know if they can improve your business, it can improve their business. Channel partners tell us they love to make the time available to be part of these forums, but only when they are well managed and they produce lasting change. Partners also value them because of the unique forum for them to discuss with their colleagues in the industry what is important for them in the unique relationship between the channel partner and the vendor. Of course, other industry bodies exist where distributors, resellers and systems integrators come together. But usually those forums involve multiple vendors and probably customer representatives as well. And those organisations typically have far broader industry agendas and goals in mind. The unique value of partner advisory boards is a forum where like-minded individuals running very similar businesses can come together and share their views and opinions confidentially with a vendor with great insights about what's happening in the marketplace and how everyone can work more effectively together. Another value for partners is that a partner advisory board strengthens the relationship. You know, as a partner, when you're involved in a partner advisory board, it's acknowledging the value of your relationship with the vendor and it's also demonstrating that you're valued. So it's no surprise that partner advisory forums are enthusiastically received when they're initially set up by vendors but all too often it seems that things go awry. So let's talk about some of the mistakes and failings that we see occurring again and again with vendor partner advisory boards. And the first is that many organisations fail to provide a genuine opportunity for their channel partners to provide feedback. They establish partner advisory board or some other forum with the best of intentions, but then get misguided about how to take advantage of the opportunity of bringing all these people together in the one room. The key is it's not about talking to channel partners, it's about inviting feedback and discussion and valuable input that is intended to direct and refine your business intentions, processes and policies. The second mistake that we see is that even if you have a successful event and a successful discussion, all too often the feedback doesn't translate into any actual change of actions and no lasting change from the vendor's behaviour and policies. Obviously, if partners are going to make their time available and give you the insights, they want to believe and understand and see that those insights are being actioned upon. The third area is that partner advisory boards often lose focus and clarity about their objectives over time. To be successful with a partner advisory board requires ongoing commitment and energy. Energy to come up with worthwhile discussions, real insights to share with each other about your business, your markets and how things could be improved, but also focusing on how can we encourage a discussion where we gain real insights about each other's challenges, which requires an element of openness, honesty and trust to achieve the sharing that you're looking for in this kind of forum. Another mistake we see from vendors is that participation is unbalanced. 
often partner advisory boards are loaded up with only the best performing partners of an organisation and or loaded up with the partners that you have the best relationship with or like the most. Obviously, if you're going to have a worthwhile discussion, you need to have a broad spectrum of channel partners involved. Not just those that are performing well or that you really enjoy doing business with, and not just the biggest partners you work with, and not partners from just one category of the market. Obviously, the more diverse representation you can have on your forum, the more diversity of views and input you're going to get that can help refine more effective decisions. So why do these mistakes occur? And what can we do about it? Well, firstly, what we find is in our experience of channel enablers is that they're not adequately owned and managed by the vendor and by the partners. Success with Partner Advisory Board requires commitment from individuals as well as their organisations. Vendors need to resource them appropriately and put the effort into making a forum like this that brings people together a valuable use of their time. Another key factor in the failure for partner advisory boards to deliver is the lack of sponsorship and support from senior executives, which is imperative to drive the value of the exercise and for partners to see how critical it is to the business that their voice is heard. Which leads to an, a third reason for failure of partner advisory boards, and that is that the channel isn't genuinely valued by your organisation. If you can't commit to listening to your channel partners, then what message is that sending to them about your commitment to them and their business? Now, looking at best practices with partner advisory boards, the first is to commit to invite feedback from your partners with a plan to actually act upon that feedback and produce change in your organisation. Two, genuinely involve your partners. Define the purpose and objectives jointly with your partners. Involve them in the creation and ongoing management of this special forum. Three, involve the most senior business executives from your business. Show channel partners how much their opinion is valued by having your senior executives attend these partner advisory boards meetings. And when they do, tell your executives to stay quiet and listen. Fourth, make it representative. Include a mix of organisations that reflects the full spectrum of your partner communities. Involve partners from all different sizes and from different market segments. And five, be sure to consistently maintain a gathering of specific individuals who share the same degree of authority in their organisation. The part of the key value of these forums is bringing together these senior executives from your channel organisations who otherwise don't get an opportunity to spend time together discussing the challenges of their shared businesses. Other factors for success with partner advisory boards is to make them regional rather than global. Make them country or regionally based so it's manageable. If you're a huge vendor and the complete spectrum of your channel partners can be extremely diverse, consider having different partner advisory boards for different size or types of partners, perhaps one for your distributors, one for your global SIs and another for your smaller market players who operate completely differently. And finally, if you're going to do it, do it right or don't bother at all. Partner advisory boards offer wonderful opportunities for vendors and for their channel organisations. A great opportunity to listen to each other and grow your business together. So make sure that's what happens. For this Channel Connections update, this is Jean, Jean Blackley, Senior Consultant for Channel Enablers. If you'd like to discuss any of the ideas in this update further, please contact your local Channel Enablers Miller Hyman representative or email us or contact us through our website. and jointly develop tactical and strategic business change together. I'm Gene Blackley, a senior consultant with the Channel Enablers Division of Miller Hyman. If you currently have a partner advisory board, you'll find this channel's connection update poses some stimulating questions. And if you don't, largest IT and T vendors have established partner advisory board programs to create a forum for receiving valuable feedback from the channel partners. But here at the Channel Enablers Division of Miller Hyman, channel partners from large, medium and small companies repeatedly complain to us that these partners Are you really listening to your channel partners?
because your channel partners have a unique view and their advisory boards are not being well managed by vendors to ensure they realise all the value they can offer. Often, it seems vendors allow these forums to become a sales pitch directed at the channel rather than a forum to receive feedback and business guidance from the channel of your business and your markets. They have insight into your customers, your competitors and your own organisation's workings. They see and know things about your organisation and your markets that you don't. So how well are you tapping their knowledge to improve your business? Many of the world